Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel on this beautiful Sunday morning. We want to wish all the fathers and grandpas and great grandpas a very blessed day. I have one announcement and that is of the hymn of the day today. We have changed it to hymn 812. Are there any other announcements? Okay, let us open our hearts for worship. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you, God, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done now. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins as a call and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen.
share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rehapin, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Jesus went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today will be read responsively whole verse by whole verse, and it is Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our second reading is from the book of Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, whom we have obtained access to this grace is with, in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die but God proves his love for us in that while we will still in that while we still were sinners Christ died for us the word of the lord
bearing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. And then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them all out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon of Hananiah, and Judas Iscariot. The one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, Cast out demons. You receive without payment. Give without payment. The Gospel for the Lord. Through the woods. 
Some people were injured. Fortunately, no one died. But all of us were scared. A tornado, its aftermath. And I think you could call it a parable of life in these recent years. Forces have moved throughout our culture. Everything seems to be changing, torn up by the roots. A deadly pandemic, riots, protests, unemployment, violence, shootings, a shaky economy, nothing seems to go in touch. People are feeling nervous, anxious, not knowing what the future may hold. Like a tornado, forces move throughout our culture with a wrath that you can't deny or even ignore. Those forces touch each and every one of us, maybe in different ways. <coughs> we survey the destruction, the chaos, where there had been order, the scattering of much that had been cherished, deep traditions uprooted, discrimination, ravaging of the land and people. It's been said, that now is the new normal. Well, Jesus must have seen similar things as he looked out over the crowds described in our gospel for today. Those people also were tossed by forces they could not understand or control. They were political pawns in a Roman-ruled world. There was violence, disease, anti-Semitism, starvation. Leaders cared little for the people. Basic questions of survival were constant companions on the pilgrimage from the cradle to the grave. We need to be reminded from time to time that Jesus also was born into a very violent world. When King Herod heard that there was this new king that was born over in Bethlehem, he became worried and jealous. And so he ordered his soldiers to kill every child in Bethlehem under the age What were they to do? They were like sheep without a shepherd, caught in a tornado that was as powerful as it was unpredictable. It seemed like they could do nothing. If anyone but Jesus had looked over the scene, they might have made the same observation about the plight of the people and then gone their own way, maybe locked their own doors, shut out the world, hid, avoided society. Now Jesus could have done that from the splendor of heaven looking down. But rather, Jesus had come to be God deep in the flesh, God walking among the people, to enter into that whirlwind of life and share it as it was experienced by all the children of the earth. We know that Jesus suffered throughout his life as well. As part of Jesus living among us, the text says that Jesus did two things. He had compassion and he hoped for laborers in the world. Jesus came to be God's love for us. Jesus came to say that one of the marks of God's love was compassion, and that God's compassion would reach to the ends of the earth and to the very end of time. But compassion doesn't seem popular these days. Television programs are filled with people competing and 
stepping on other people, everyone wanting to be number one, everyone shouting out their positions, their politics. It seems like you don't hear a lot of compassion. But maybe compassion is more powerful than retribution. Perhaps God's compassion doesn't seem like much from time to time. But have you ever looked into your children's eyes and wondered what will become of them? What world will they ever walk in? We want there to be equality in our children's lives. But how will we define it to say nothing of ensuring it? Where will the whirlwinds of change and uncertainty take them? Short of locking them in a room, is there any way to protect them and guarantee their future? Well, to many who know such concerns and fears, God's compassion is a gift, for it assures us that we belong to God no matter what our fears are, no matter what changes and chances happen in life. In his letter to the Romans, St. Paul says, nothing, nothing on earth can separate us from the love of God. Situations like these, often don't have easy answers. Where do we step in? Where do we back off? And then it's times like this, it's good to know that God has given us not only direction, but hope that God does not forsake us. So is the compassion of God a great thing? Of course, especially if you're afraid if you are hurt or if guilt touches your life, it is if you have to make hard decisions about your future and your life. I suspect that these categories are familiar to each of us. And Jesus had come to say that God was not an angry, judgmental God, but a compassionate one, and that God would never abandon his people. God would be with his people. God would even suffer with his people. God's gift of compassion would be present to help people survive those whirlwinds we call life. And yet Jesus wanted to do more than just say that God is compassionate. He also had in mind to call men and women to work in the world so that all may know and rejoice and compassionate God does exist. Jesus says the harvest is great. It still is. And Jesus hoped for laborers for the fields. The story of that labor is written into the history of the saints. Many have worked to represent the compassion of God in and for the world. But that call to labor isn't just historical. It's still alive and well, and it comes to you and me from many directions. You are the only you that God has in the world. Given some local statistics, you might also know that for every bad thing that happens, good things happen. We don't always hear about those. Together with the ministry of living carefully, there is a lot of ministry that's going on. The first hospitals and schools were built by Christians. What are the attractions of people to Christianity in the early church was that Christians had compassion. They accepted people. God calls us in our day and time as well. 
and God has you and me in mind for the ministries of listening and doing things as a witness so that the world may know and rejoice and have hope. Today is Father's Day, and I was thinking of the time when I was very young, and we had just moved out of our small apartment into a house that my father had built. It was wonderful for young kids, a big yard, a woods behind the yard, a big gully with a creek on one side, and trees, pear trees, fruit trees, all kinds of wonderful things we find in the nature. But one day, we were out playing in the backyard. There was this shed in the middle of the yard. An old shed. We were never sure what the purpose of it ever was. It was maybe 10 by 10 feet. And my sister would, would play house and stuff like that in the shed. And so she went and she opened the door. And there was this old man dressed in rags, smelling. And she slammed the door and went up and got my dad. And my dad came down and he roused that person from sleep. And the person said that he had been traveling a long ways and he heard that there was this rescue mission down in the city and he was trying to get there. And he was hungry and he just needed to sleep and to rest for the night. My dad said, wait just a minute, I'll be back. My dad went into the house not to call the police or to get a shotgun. But rather, he came out with a paper bag. And as he walked toward that shed, he picked some pears and some apples from the tree. And then he gave them to the man. And then my dad took out his wallet, a $10 bill he gave to that man and said, the bus meets up at the corner there, and we'll take you into town, and you get off the bus here, and you turn here, you walk there, and you'll find place to stay, and food to eat. Maybe that was one of the things that got me to thinking when I was very young. Why would someone do that for someone else? The harvest is great, and still the call goes out. I know that some people may not have had a good relationship with their father growing up. Maybe they didn't have a father at all. But know this. No matter what happens, you have a loving father in heaven who loves you deeply, cares for you, goes with you to the good and the bad times. Perhaps the other influence in my life as a father figure was the pastor I had in my junior high years. He had a big brick parsonage next to the church. And the church was in a declining neighborhood. And he took some flat because he would allow people to come in who party too hard and let them sleep it off. There was a woman who was abused, and she came with two children, and he let them stay for a couple of months until they could get resettled. And also, I found out that he had uh, taken vacation and joined Mark and Selena with the people. And so since then, I've made it a plan of mine, actually God's, to reach out in the community and serve the people around me. And I was very pleased. And one of the attractions I have for this church 
churches, you do that. You reach out to people in a changing neighborhood. And still, though, the harvest is great. The call goes out. And still it comes to each one of us who have experienced, like I did with my father and my pastor, the compassion of God. They too know what it's like to help someone else. My father grew up during the Great Depression. He knew what it was like to be hungry, to not be able to buy things, to rely on neighbors and each other for food. One translation of our gospel story says that when Jesus saw the crowds, his heart was filled with pity for them because they were worried and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And so he said to his disciples, the harvest is large, but there are a few workers to gather it all in. Pray for the owner of the harvest that he will send out workers Tornado strikes, pandemic spread, people are killed, and people are worried. Forces move throughout our culture. It seems like everything has been uprooted and changed. And when Jesus saw things like this, he had compassion. With his lips and his very life, he bore testimony to the compassion of God. He suffered as we suffer. He knows everything that we go through. He lived God's love, shown us in person what God was like. A love so great that it could touch the fearful, the hurt, the guilty, the confused of one time and every time. And we too have been touched by that compassion. And now we have been called to represent that compassion out to the world. God has chosen us to listen and to carry out compassion towards others so that all might know that they are loved by the one who would be shepherd to worry and help the sheep.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He seemed to heaven. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come command to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Amen. As we have our prayers today, you're able to sit, stand, or kneel, whichever you're comfortable doing. Let us pray for the church, the world, and for one another. Heavenly Father, thank you for your kindness. You call us your treasured people. You send your Son to redeem us. Even while we were ungodly and estranged from you, Jesus calls us to share your love with other ungodly sinners. Thank you. Help us to do, say, and be everything you desire of us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Jesus sent the apostles to proclaim the good news, forgive sins, and heal those wounded by sin, evil, and death. Strengthen and equip your church to follow in their footsteps and to lead many people to the one who died that they might live. Lord, in your mercy. We plead on behalf of our persecuted sisters and brothers. Help us to speak in their defense and them by our prayers and material support and live lives wor worthy of our mutual calling in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Make this congregation lovely with holiness, faithfulness, generosity, and joy. Fill us with your spirit so we serve you with gr joyful gratitude. Let our lives show the love of Jesus to those who need him the most. Lord, in your mercy. Father, by your name, all fatherhood is blessed. Shape all fathers, foster fathers, uncles, grandpas, and mentors to reflect your strength, wisdom, and love. Heal fractured relationships between dads and their children. Comfort those who can't be fathers, have lost a child, or who grieve the absence of a good dad in their lives. Be their dear father now and always. Lord, in your mercy. You are Lord and King over all nations. Cause our leaders to acknowledge your lordship and to do your will for the sake of the people entrusted to them. Help them to be honest, fair, competent, and just. We humbly ask that you give us the leadership we need, not that simply that which we desire or deserve. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who protect and serve others in difficult and dangerous situations. Make them competent, brave, and wise. Surround them and their loved ones with your holy angels. Help us to honor their service. Speed the day when they stand down from duty and enjoy your blessings. Lord, in our mercy. <clears throat> Have mercy on all who are wounded in body, <clears throat> mind, and spirit. 
We pray for families stressed to the breaking point, businesses, business owners facing foreclosure, farmers, fishers, ranchers, and truckers, caregivers to special needs people, and those whom we name before you or in the silence of our heart. Bring all the joy of your saving help. Lord, in your mercy. Most Holy Father, thank you for the lives of your faithful people who have gone before us, especially those dearest to us. Keep their memories bright. Keep us steadfast in the faith they have passed on to us. Keep the cross of Jesus ever before us and keep us true to our calling as his disciples. By his merits, <clears throat> bring us into your blessed kingdom, where with all whom have been redeemed, we'll praise, adore, and glorify you in the power of the Holy Spirit forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers, dear Father, as they touch your heart through the Spirit who searches our hearts for the sake of your beloved Son. Answer them as they may be best for us and give you the glory. Amen. Okay. And now, may the peace of our Lord be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you.
give our thanks and praise. Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns.
Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.